Hi there. Hey. <laughs> we, student Dr. Katie, student Dr. Jason, and student Dr. Andrew, represent the physicians of the fictitious family medicine practice. The Good Pathology Clinic. In this video today, we intend to... And, oh yeah, and the written information below. <laughs> of course. Yeah, Thanks. totally forgot about Thanks, that. Thanks, Jason. Yep. Me too. Um, so, within this video and the written supplemental information, we briefly discuss the three most common types of head pain conditions. Migraine headaches, tension headaches, and cluster headaches. We then explore the best evidence non-pharmaceutical lifestyle modifications that contemporary interdisciplinary scholars recommend people implement in order to prevent and or treat their respective head pain condition. Wow. That'd be a pretty good deal. Mm-hmm. Gives me a headache just thinking about it. <laughs> about about what? All this tongue twister stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, um, after watching this video, the viewer should be able to answer the to complete the following objectives. Characterize the three main types of migraines and headaches. Two. Describe the benefits of reducing stress on migraines and chronic headaches. Three, compare and contrast three stress reduction techniques that are effective for preventing migraines and chronic headaches. Four, describe two non-pharmacological options for treating acute episodes of migraines and headaches. And five, value the merits of stress reduction on migraine headache management. Most migraine sufferers are sufferers because they do not respond, at least not always, to over-the-counter remedies, for example, Excedrin, Ibuprofen, or even many prescription remedies, for example, Sumatriptan. We're also aware that most migraine sufferers have tried a wide variety of non-pharmacologic techniques to little or no avail. Moreover, the responses of our survey indicated that financial and health insurance concerns apply to a fair percentage of headache sufferers. That was an important factor in us determining to research non-pharmaceutical preventive treatment measures for headaches. In the comments section below, you can find the written information that goes along with this video. Request for paper copies of any of the information included herein can be made by contacting Katie, Jason, and or Andrew. Lastly, we welcome any feedback our viewers can offer. All right, so let's talk about the three different types of headaches. So we've got migraines, tension type headaches, and cluster headaches. Now we're gonna kinda group migraines and tension type headaches together, and they're both more common in women, whereas cluster headaches are more common in men. So migraines are usually a unilateral or one-sided headache that is generally described as throbbing or pulsing, and is accompanied by nausea, vomiting, light sensitivity, sometimes sensitivity to sound, um, and is thought to involve the trigeminal nerve, which uh, sort of controls some of the intracranial blood vessels, as well as pain to the head. Tension-type headaches, on the other hand, are described as a whole head headache, and they're, uh, they've been described classically as a, there's a band around my head, and um, it's often associated with muscle tightness, especially around the neck and shoulders. Okay, and then cluster headache finally is an intense pain around one eye, and it's more common in men, like I said, and they'll usually be tearing of that same eye, and this is thought to involve the hypothalamus. Before moving on, there are a few really important things that you should know. First of all, the number one most common cause of headaches is medication overuse and associated rebound. The medications involved in this are typically the same medications used to treat headaches. So users get involved in a cycle where they take the medications, such as even ibuprofen, for pain, 
and it works and then they take it more and more eventually it stops working and what's more is that your brain is used to this drug so now the lack of drug if you stop taking it or if you don't take enough actually induces new headaches all by itself secondly it is critical for you to identify the triggers that are unique to your head pain condition and then avoid those triggers as much as is humanly possible. In a retrospective study of almost 2,000 migraine sufferers, 75% reported having at least one trigger involved in their acute migraine attacks. In order of descending frequency, these include emotional stress, hormones in women, not eating, weather, sleep disturbances, odors, neck pain, lights, alcohol, smoke, sleeping late, heat, food, exercise, and sexual activity. Wow, that's incredible that emotional stress is the number one trigger in 80% of migraine sufferers. Right? It really makes you appreciate the benefits of stress reduction. That's for sure. Mm. What are some of the benefits of stress reduction? Well, you know, first thing that comes to mind is a reduction in blood pressure, which is one of the main goals in migraine management. Totally. Mm -hmm. And and then that would uh, preclude the need for patients to take certain prescription anti-hypertensives like beta blockers and calcium channel blockers and other heart drugs. Yeah. Yeah, and a better emotional state would reduce any need for uh, antidepressant, hopefully. Oh yeah, and those are also commonly prescribed for a variety of reasons in headache sufferers. Yeah. So over 50% of our survey respondents indicated that they were interested in learning more about lifestyle modifications. So the three we're going to discuss today include nutrition, exercise, and stress reduction techniques. Worst case scenario, your headache shouldn't get worse and your systemic health might improve. Yeah. Win-win. So Jason, how would you recommend people go about uh, learning about nutrition? Well, there's, uh, if you don't have a whole lot of money lying around for a nutritionist consult, which I would recommend if you, if you can afford it, uh, the Idaho plate method is a good place to start. Oh, that's great. That's smart. Yeah. All right. So do you know stuff about exercise too? A little bit. Uh, I. You know, as long as you're getting up and about, even walking is a good place to start. But I really recommend, especially for headaches, yoga or Tai Chi because that incorporates both meditation and exercise. That's smart. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and then uh, in terms of stress reduction techniques, there are a number of things you can try. Uh, we'll discuss meditation in slightly m more detail later on in this video. Um, but honestly, psychotherapy and cognitive behavioral therapy can really drastically improve a lot of adverse situations um, that people face. Mm. We're all messed up. <laughs> it's true. That's very interesting, Jason. So what I'm hearing you say is that every time you think of that incredibly disturbing and traumatic childhood event, you get a crippling migraine? And you say that's the only time that you ever get migraines? 